Hi, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I'm gonna teach you five concepts you need to know to build a better mousetrap car. All right, so the first thing you need to know is that reducing the weight of your car will significantly improve your results. Let's check out why. All right guys, so when you think about a mousetrap car, you only have one source of one source of power and that is the single mousetrap and because that mousetrap has a confined amount of energy what you're trying to do is maximize the amount of total energy of the mousetrap and you're you're trying to get the most amount of total energy to be able to move the car forward which is what we're going to which is the potential energy of the car and the more your car weighs the more energy gets lost, the more total, the more amount of total energy gets lost. And the more it weighs, the more you lose in total energy. So although your mousetrap may have, let's say six blocks of energy, when you, if the more your car weighs, the more total energy you lose out. And when you convert to potential energy, you're only left with four blocks of energy to move your car forward. Therefore, if you want your car to go faster and farther, you're going to want to decrease the amount of weight of your car so less energy has to be used to propel the car forward. The second concept you need to know about is to reduce the friction in your car. For why you want to reduce the weight, uh, reducing the amount of friction in your car is also about energy conversion. And if we think about it like the last problem, we want to convert potential energy, which is the amount of stored energy in the mousetrap to kinetic energy. When we do that, if it's a perfect co conversion, we get all six blocks into kinetic energy. However, whenever you convert from potential energy to kinetic energy, you're always going to lose some energy to heat. And when we do that, let's say we we lose one block to heat, and the heat is friction. So when we convert potential energy to kinetic energy, we end up with five blocks instead of six. And the more friction we have, the more energy we have to move forward, and therefore, you're unable, you're, you're if the, and therefore, the amount of friction you have is going to hinder how far or how fast your car will travel. So you're going to want to minimize the amount of friction in your car. The third concept you need to know about is the drive axle diameter. And this can be addressed in two ways, depending on if you're trying to get a faster car or a car that goes a longer distance. All right, so now let's talk about axle diameter. And the essentially the larger your drive axle diameter is, the faster your car will go. But the, but the lower the distance it will travel. And we can see that if we look at, if we compare a one centimeter diameter drive axle to a two centimeter drive axle. Now for the purpose of this diagram, let's say that the one centimeter ac drive axle requires one block to move per second, while the two centimeter axle requires two. So if we, go by that logic, then every second we're going to use one block of energy for the one centimeter axle. And by the time we get to four seconds, we've already used our energy. But if we look at the two centimeter axle, by the time we get to two seconds, we already use all of our energy. So we can see that with a, with a smaller axle, you're distributing energy over a greater time frame and in turn a greater distance. While with a bigger drive axle, you're going to be you're going to be distributing energy in a large in larger chunks, but over a smaller distance. So you get more speed here, but more distance here. Similar to drive axle diameter, the fourth concept we're going to talk about is the drive wheel diameter. All right, so drive wheel diameter is something you want to consider in either of two ways, similar to how we discussed about drive axle diameter. So essentially, the larger your drive wheel, the farther it will go, but the slower it also will go. And 
Conversely, the smaller your drive wheel is, the faster it will go, but it also won't go as far as if you would use a larger drive wheel. So let's look at our diagram real quick and we'll show you how. And let's say that we're using a drive wheel that is 10 centimeters up here and 20 centimeters down here with the circumference. So a circumference of 10 centimeters, circumference of 20 centimeters. So if we start at zero and each block here is one ro one revolution or one rotation on of string onto the drive axle, when we start at zero, it requires one rotation for 10, two rotations for 20, three rotations for 30, and four rotations to get to 40 meters, 40 centimeters or 0.4 meters. And if we do the same with 20 centimeters circumference wheel, then one rotation will get us to 20, two rotations to 40 centimeters, three rotations to 60, and four rotations to 80 centimeters. So again, we see that with a smaller wheel, you have shorter shorter intervals of energy bursts or energy distributions, which means that at every interval, you have a higher amount of energy being used and therefore you will be going faster. But again, your vehicle starts to coast at, um, at 40 centimeters, so you're going to have a slower distance. But if you have a larger uh, circumference drive wheel, then you'll be going farther because the amount of energy you use in every interval is expanded. So you're using less energy over time, but you're going to be using that, but you're gonna have a, a larger amount of time to use that energy. So you're going farther and, but, but slower. And the last and final concept you need to know about is the lever arm length. When you have a larger lever arm, you have more intervals or more rotations to put on your drive wheel. So if we say that each, each centimeter of, let's say this is a four centimeter drive arm and this is a two centimeter drive arm and the circumference of our wheel is 10 centimeters and the drive axle diameter is one centimeter. So essentially every for every centimeter of string we have, we'll be going 10 centimeters. So if we diagram this out, then at 10 centimeters, we use one inch and 20 centimeters, we use two inch or two, centi two centimeters of string. And the same thing here, except with a four centimeter long drive arm, you're going to be going 40 centimeters instead of 20 compared to a two centimeter long drive arm. So again, it's the same concept. With a longer lever arm, you're going to have a larger interval to, to use all of the mousetrap's power. So you're going to be going farther, but at a slower rate. While if you have a smaller lever arm, the time it takes to use all of the string decreases. So you're going to be going at a faster speed, but at the cost of a lower distance. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be updated every single time I upload a new video. Also, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at underscore unfazed. See you next time.